Yo, what's up guys? Chase the Rogue here, and welcome back to another Elden Ring video. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be taking a look at the newest patch for Elden Ring. Patch 1.06 just dropped, and it has quite a lot of changes, so I wanted to go through all of them and talk about some of the major ones that I think are going to have a great impact on the PvP. So let's just start off with one of the major changes. They added the function to send summoning signs to summoning pools in multiple areas, including distant areas, and did the same thing with invasions. So when you're sending an invasion sign, I have my game open right here. We can do it right here. When you go to invade now, now you have the ability to invade nearby only. So that would just be in your regular area, like a regular invasion, or both near and far. And to my knowledge, it searches the game for anybody in your level range and weapon level range until they find one in a distant area. So it'll just like branch out and look for whoever's available to be invaded. There was a mod in Dark Souls 3 called Wex Dust that did this. It was honestly game changing at the time because you'd have to warp to every area to try to find an invasion. And the lower the player base gets in the game, the harder it is to find the connection. Now that they added this, I believe there's going to be quite a lot less downtime on invasions. It's the exact same thing for the co-op sign as well. If you go to the multiplayer and go to the small golden effigy, you can either send your sign to a nearby summoning pool or both near and far. I think this will have a pretty huge impact on the online activity, as now you don't have to be in the same area as all the players in your level and weapon level range. As long as they exist and are using the both near and far option with the summon pool, you'll be able to summon them. And then same for the invaders, you'll find them no matter the area. So I think this is really going to improve the online activity. Now that we got one of the biggest changes out of the way, let's continue and see what else they've changed. So they've added a new way to advance White Mask Varys questline other than participating in the multiplayer invasions by defeating a new NPC. Okay, that's pretty useful for people that don't like playing the online. And then we have the balance changes. They added the following adjustments to Great Swords, Curve Great Swords, and Great Hammers. Okay. They reduced the time it takes for rolling to become possible after an attack. Jump attack, do wield attack, and attacks while mounted are not included. Alright, so the time it takes to be able to roll after an initial attack has definitely been lowered quite a lot. I use great swords pretty often, and the difference right here after an initial light attack is pretty significant. Same with the heavy attack, running attack. The recovery time on all these has definitely improved. I also have a curved great sword here, so we can compare as well. Light attack to roll. Oh wow, yeah, that's a that's a significant improvement as well. Same with the heavy attack. All the attacks probably have a much faster recovery now for the dodge. Oh, that's a great improvement, honestly. And then I have the pickaxe to show off the great hammer recovery time. So we have a light attack into the roll, the heavy attack, the rolling attack. They also increased the motion speed of strong attacks, charge attacks, and guard counters motion speed as well. Now guard counters aren't something I really use in PvP. Maybe if they are a little bit faster, they could be useful. That's definitely something I'm going to have to test in actual PvP later on. And then they also increased the attack speed of great axes and reduced the time it takes for the rolling to become possible after an attack. I do have a Great Axe right here to test it out, so they increased the attack speed of Great Axes. Oh, it does feel extremely fast, honestly. I didn't use Great Axes very often. This does seem like a speed improvement, though. And then the ability to dodge out much faster is just there for Great Swords, Curve Great Swords, and Great Axes overall. Honestly, great changes. They increase the rolling distance when player has a light equip load. Alright, so yeah, they probably increase the distance at which you actually can roll now if your equip load is light. So as a comparison, this is a medium roll. Let's just take off all our armor here. Oh yeah, that's that's quite a, a huge jump in distance for the light roll. I do enjoy that. I wasn't seeing anybody utilize light roll. I mean, I still probably won't. I'm more of a fan of poise, but at least they have that going for them now. Alright, what other changes do we have here? They increase the hitbox of Cypherpada's weapon skill, Unblockable Blade. Okay, welcome. That's a welcome change. You don't see that weapon too often in general. Increase the range of the Ash of War Glintstone Pebble and Glintstone Dart Projectile while decreasing the damage and stagger power. Alright, that's interesting because Glintstone Pebble was definitely one of the more overpowered Ashes of War. It could one-shot on a dedicated build, and it, has, it comes out pretty quickly. I think I still have a weapon here that probably has it. If not, we can just attune one really quick to see. Alright, so they increased the projectile range of the Ash of War, not the follow-up, so just the projectile has increased range. And I don't think it combos any longer, as it does say that they lowered the stagger damage as well. That's definitely something we're going to have to test in combat. I really did want to know how much they lowered the stagger, so we're testing here if it combos anymore. Oh, and it it does not combo. Wow. Moving on, they also decrease the travel distance and invincibility frames of the Ash of War Bloodhound Step. That was a very needed change, honestly. The iframes that Ash of War had was pretty ridiculous. On top of the fact that you could outrun anybody by just spamming the Ash of War away, you could consecutively just outpace your opponent even if they were fully sprinting. So I'm intrigued to see how they change that. So it's the travel distance. Let's try that out. And obviously they, they lowered the invincibility frames as well. That's something I can see right now though, but... Okay, you know what? Honestly, the distance on this 
something similar to quick step i'm going to grab a quick step weapon to compare here but this is quite a heavy change to the distance of bloodhound step wow as a comparison this is regular quick step so we just have this distance traveled right here with the regular quick step and then if i were to go to bloodhound step it's still a higher distance of course but it's much much lower than what it once was as well, it says reduced performance when used continuously and increased travel distance when on light equipped load. Okay, so they made it so if you have a light equipped load, just like the roll, you're going to go further. Let's compare here. So we have the regular Bloodhound step back to the rock, and then we'll try the, the lower equipped load Bloodhound step. Okay, not the, the biggest difference, but I can definitely see it. Now we're going to test the reduced performance when used continuously. So we have the initial one. And wow, yeah, the follow-up ones definitely do not travel as far distance as the initial Ash of War. That's going to be very useful for people that use that to get out of dangerous situations when they're low health and just kind of spam it to get the distance away. Now I feel like a sprint may be able to keep up with that, and you can definitely try to roll catch it. So this is an interesting one. They shorten the activation interval when using quick step skill in succession, which increases its ability to circle around the enemy when locked on, but it also has reduced performance when used continuously. So maybe just like Bloodhound Step, the, the range of the quick step itself gets slightly lower when you use it continuously. And they increase travel distance when on light equip load, just like Bloodhound Step. All right, so this is the initial quick step distance, just right there without any follow-ups. And then we're going to do some continuous ones to compare. Uh, it does seem to be a small distance change in the follow-up one. It's honestly pretty hard to see, but I can see that the follow-up one does have a little bit less distance than the initial one. And then, one of the most amazing changes in the update. Decrease the damage and bleed buildup of the weapon skill corpse piler when hit with the blood attack. When hit by the blade, the damage is only decreased slightly. Now that's fair. So the Corpse Piler is the Ash of War for the Rivers of Blood. So when you're hit by just the blood range of the Ash of War, it's going to do quite a lot less damage, I guess. Decrease the damage. I'm hoping quite a lot. I guess we'll see when we get hit by it. As well as a lower bleed buildup. Because honestly, if you did get hit by even the first two initial parts of the Ash of War, your bleed meter was pretty high. If you got roll caught by the second half of the Ash of War, you were getting bled as well. So that added to the high damage that it already had. So this was definitely a needed nerf. And then they also decreased the target tracking ability of Sorcery, Stars of Ruin, which is another welcome one because once Stars of Ruin was cast, if you had no cover to hide behind, even when you were dodge rolling consecutively, you would get chipped through your dodges because it tracked so well. So maybe that won't happen any longer. We're going to have to see, I guess, when I face it next. All right, for the rest of them, they are all just bug fixes, some of which we may not have happened upon or heard of, but I'm just going to quickly run through them just so we have them listed here. They fixed a bug which caused some attacks of the Lucerne to not pierce enemies' guard. Nice. They fixed a bug which made it harder for a two-handed jumping attack with the Bloodhound's Fang to break the enemy's stance. Never experienced that, but nice that it's gone. Fixed a bug which caused the effect of Determination and Royal Knight's Resolve to disappear after using the parry skill with a dagger. Oh, that'd be rough. Good fix, good fix. You have the Perseverance on your weapon, or Royal Knight's Resolve, sorry. Then you do the parry and it just leaves before you get the crit. That's weird. Fixed a bug when dual wielding axe and great axe, which caused additional effects from spells, weapon skills, and items to not be applied correctly. Interesting. Fixed a bug when two handing a halberd, which made it harder to withstand enemies' attack after using a guard counter. I never would have experienced this because I don't use these very often, but good to know. Fixed a bug which caused the physical attack affinity of some weapons to be different from the affinity listed in the description. Okay. Fixed a bug which caused the player to become more easily noticed by the enemy when wearing deathbed dress. Even when crouching. That one's pretty funny, honestly. And another bug with that. Fixed a bug which caused the charge attack with a flail to damage ally characters when wearing deathbed dress. What was going on with the deathbed dress? They also fixed a bug that caused HP to regenerate when switching your equipment to certain types of armor. I wonder if that's the, the swap where you'd go between the two glinstone crowns to regenerate your HP. It was a pretty crazy bug, so I really hope that one's fixed. Fixed a bug where the effect added to the weapon using Mists of Slumber was lost when the player received an attack. Oh, that's the Santrina Sword Ash of War. That makes sense. I wasn't sure if that was intended or not. But yeah, when you use the Ash of War to have the sleep buff on the weapon, if you got hit by your opponent, it would leave. Fixed a bug which caused the playable character's movement to become unstable upon hitting certain enemies with the skill Ghost Flame Ignition. Never experienced that, but interesting. Fixed a bug which prevented players from using the Queen's Black Flame skills follow-up attack when performing the skill with insufficient FP. <laughs> Fixed a bug with the weapon skill Zammer Ice Storm, which allowed players to more easily withstand enemies' attacks when using the skill with insufficient FP. Interesting. 
Fix the bug which caused the effect of spells and items added to the right hand armament to occur when using certain weapon skills with the left hand. Never seen that one. That one's interesting as well. Fix the bug which caused the FP consumption description of certain weapon skills to be different from its actual FP cost. Oh, weird. Okay. Fix the bug that allows the Rock Blaster to not consume any FP when used with a staff on the left hand and no weapon on the right hand. I'm surprised i never seen that. <laughs> that. That could be pretty powerful, I suppose. Infinite Rock Blast with no FP. Fix the bug which caused the charged version of Black Flame Ritual to consume the same amount of stamina as the normal version. Okay. Fix the bug which caused the player to receive less HP recovery from incantations and items other than the Flask of Crimson Tears when activating the effect of Melania's Great Rune. Okay. Fix the bug which caused the Opaline Hard Tier to not boost physical damage negation. Fix the bug which prevented the player from jumping mid-air while riding under specific conditions. Okay. Fix the bug which allowed jump attack with the Colossal Weapons while mounted to hit twice consecutively. <laughs> well, that would have been pretty powerful. Fix the bug which caused some signs to appear more than once in the summoning pool. Fix the bug which caused the effect of the weapon skills attack to persist under specific circumstances. Okay. Fix the bug which sometimes caused significant performance issues at ordinate liturgical town under certain circumstances. I sometimes get that in any of the snow areas where there's a lot of particle effects from the snow in general, so maybe that will improve that. Fix the bug which prevented the player from picking up dropped runes upon death under certain circumstances. That's a funny one. Never experienced that. Fix the bug which allowed users to reach certain inaccessible areas during multiplayer. Okay, that's an interesting one. Fix the bug which caused the multiplayer area to have different boundaries than expected. Okay, kind of in line with the last one. Fix the bug that causes some enemies to have incorrect visuals and behaviors. Fix the bug that caused incorrect sounds to be played under certain circumstances. That would be quite annoying. Fix the bug which caused some areas to make the player unable to move, which led to death. <laughs> That's a rough one. I never had that happen to me. Fix the bug that caused some places on the map to have incorrect visuals and hitboxes. Okay, in line with the earlier one. Fix the bug in some maps that allowed users to reach unexpected locations using certain procedures. All right. Fix the bug with the PC version, which caused click input to occur when equipping staves or sacred seals and switching windows to activate. That's a, that's a strange one. Other performance improvements and bug fixes. Alright, I guess that's it for patch 1.06. Honestly, some very welcome changes. I can't believe they added something like Wex Dust for the invasions. That That's going to improve the online activity so much, I feel. And then they also nerfed some of the things like Bloodhound Step and Rivers of Blood, which heavily needed it. So this is overall a great patch. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I really do appreciate the input. I will see you guys all for the next Elden Ring video. And the next stream, we're going to be testing out all the changes and how they apply in PvP. So I will see you there. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time for the next video. Goodbye. Goodbye.